breaking news. All right, thank you for joining us now for this CBS News special report. Sean Fain is speaking live. We're going to go to that now. Our union just showed the world what's possible when workers unite that, uh, to you know, fight for a more. Place for the state and the we have created the threat and of a good example. Local governments to and give now the schools the tools we're going to build need. on it. In a lot of cases, the money. We just went on strike like we've never been on strike before uh, a and won a historic contract as a result. Cameras are expensive. Now we're going to organize like we've never organized before. The money's there for that. So we can raise the, the standard everywhere. And that's going to take time. That's why we went into bargaining with Stellantis and demanded an expiration date of April 30th, 2028. First of all, um, thanks Our a lot. Our goal is thanks to come back the to the report. table in 2028, a, more a than much I stronger union, you were hired by a much board louder union, and, I just think and a much board larger has been union. Anything but transparent so to all the workers get everywhere, um, get ready to stand up. Everything we want in this contract was intended to prepare us for the fight at the next contract. A divided union is a weak union. That is why we fought so hard on these issues that unite us, such as increasing wages. In this contract, we want record-breaking 25% pay increases. That's more than all the wages increases our union won over the last 22 years combined. It wasn't just the hourly members. We also won a historic raise for the salary bargaining unit. For decades, many salary bargaining union members at Stellantis have felt like second-class citizens. This time, our national negotiators went into bargaining and united. We were clear. We were fighting for pay equity for everyone. For the first time in Stellantis history, we have won matching general wage increases for our salary bargaining unit. They will also receive a total of 25% in wage increases over the life of this contract. We also won cost of living or COLA for both salary and hourly workers. This will ensure that all of our wages keep up with inflation. When COLA is added in, we estimate that our wages will increase by 33%. When compounded by the end of the contract, by the end of our agreement, we estimate that our starting wage for production workers will increase by about 67% from 1804 to $30.10 an hour when combined with COLA. Similar, we estimate that our top wage will increase by about 33% from 31.77 to 42.24 an hour. These are enormous gains, but we didn't just win on that issue. That unites us. We also defended, defeated the company's attempts to divide us such as a lower wage tier at Mopar. For decades, members of Mopar have worked at significantly lower wages to the production workers. That comes to an end in this contract. At ratification, Mopar members will immediately move over to the production wage scale. Mopar members will see immediately raises of up to 76%. A member with three years seniority at a Mopar facility will, go, will, upon ratification, go from $20 an hour to $35.26 an hour. That is life-changing. We do have to face some hard choices uh, at Mopar facilities, though. The company came to us and said they could grow Mopar or they could consolidate, could consolidate Mopar. Some of our Mopar hubs and, and gain jobs or not consolidate and lose Mopar jobs. It wasn't an easy choice or decision, but we took the consolidation plan, which came with a guarantee of job security moving forward and the right to negotiate enhanced moving bonuses beyond the $37,500 that we've already secured. Killing the wage tier and winning another additional job security enhanced moving bonuses should mean our Mopar members will still come out way ahead of where we were. Though it will mean some discomfort Another wage tier that was effectively eliminated is the endless abuse of so-called supplemental employees. Temps have long been our lowest paid members. The company hires thousands of them, they treat them like dirt, and they pay them poverty wages. We put an end to that in this agreement. At Stellantis, we want the immediate conversion of thousands of temps to full-time upon ratification. 
The rest of the current temp workers will be converted when they achieve nine months. Going forward, no one will remain a temp for more than nine months before getting flipped to full-time in progression. And those nine months will count to their progression. So they'll still make top rate after three years. In short, the era of PERMA temps is over. Thanks to the power of our strike, the lowest paid temps at Stellantis will see a 168% raise through this agreement, rising from $15.78 an hour to over $42 an hour with cost of living allowance. Temps will also receive sub, profit sharing, and other benefits for the first time. Thousands of supplemental workers at Stellantis will benefit from this agreement. In fact, this tentative agreement has more money and gains for current supplemental employees than the entire value of all the gains for all members in the 2019 agreement. Another pot sweetener is that all UAW members will receive a $5,000 ratification bonus. The economic gains in this contract are so incredible that some company analysts and pundits have tried to spread fear that the big three will try to walk away from their com product commitments. That's why we made it a top priority to win the right to strike over plant closings, outsourcing of existing core jobs, and product and investment commitments. These are historic wins that will give us an unprecedented power to fight back against plant closures and job loss. We have gone from seeing Stellantis footprint shrink in the United States to gaining the leverage to grow our plants and our membership. Going into these negotiations, the company was explicit. They wanted to shrink the company's footprint, killing 5,000 jobs. Their plan was to cut, cut, and cut. But we had a different plan. We knew that record profits meant record contracts. That's why we pushed the company to not only stop job cuts, but add 5,000 more jobs under our agreement. And the right to strike means we can protect these jobs with our most powerful tool. We forced the company to change course at places like Trenton Engine and Toledo Machining. Where they wanted to cut, we made them invest. And for the first time in a long time, we've done the unthinkable, reopened a plant. We didn't do it by begging the company or agreeing to work terrible hours or take a pay cut or pursue a race to the bottom. We didn't do it by giving back. We did it by fighting back. You all know the story of Belvedere Assembly. There are many stories like it. The company closes a profitable plant. It tears a small town apart and it uproots entire families. For years, there was supposedly nothing we could do about it. We went into these negotiations knowing that we had a duty to save Belvedere. And UAW family, we did exactly that. Less than a year ago, the company announced its plans to, uh, to indefinitely idle Belvedere Assembly. Over thousands of our members and their families were preparing to walk that lonely path they say so many have walked before them. They would be scattered across this country. All right, we are hearing from Sean Fain there. They are live on Facebook on the UAW page. Right now, he is holding that Facebook Live to just go over some of the victories that they are touting now from those contract negotiations that they reached with Stellantis. At the beginning of that, he spoke with Toyota workers saying that even though they are not part of that union yet, they do want them to know that union, the UAW for them stands for you are welcome. Those Stellantis workers were there celebrating those victories for both salary and hourly workers. And they say that they want a deal that will keep up with inflation, something that a lot of those members have been talking about is an issue for them. Now, starting with wage increases, they talked about that going up by 67% for those top wages. They're saying they're going up by 33%. We're going to listen back in as they continue that conversation. The community can breathe a sigh of relief. That's what we mean by saving the American dream. Not only have we saved Belvedere plants, if we unite and fight yeah, no to force them to. But we didn't only win a new product in Belvedere. 
We called it the stand-up no strike as an echo of our union's founding victory, the sit-down strike. We wanted to reach back to our roots and revive the fighting spirit of Flint in the 1930s. But we were also looking to the future. Right now, our industry is undergoing a historic transformation. In a time of record inequality, where the auto industry is rapidly changing, we're building a fighting union that can set a new standard. We know we have to secure our jobs in an electric vehicle future. We have to make sure that green jobs will be good jobs. And we have to stop the forces of corporate greed from making the EV transition a race to the bottom. So when Atlantis told us they had plans to form a joint venture battery plant at Belvedere, we fought hard to make sure those would be UAW jobs under our UAW national agreement. Under the agreement we reached with Stellantis, all employees who work for the future joint venture will be employed by Stellantis and leased to the joint venture. This means they'll fall under our national agreement. The significance of this cannot be overstated. For any current UAW members at Stellantis transfer into jobs, they will bring with them all of their pay, benefits, and seniority. That includes our former members from Belvedere who want to return home. New hires who don't transfer in will start at 75% of the max rate of pay under our national agreement. That's over $26 an hour immediately in an industry that's currently trying to pay a fraction of that. And that will grow over time to over $30 an hour by the end of the contract. Having this work under our national agreement will mean that the next time we go to the table, we can fight together to push those wages up to our top rate. Having this work under our national agreement is critical to the future of our industry and the union. Wherever this industry goes, the UAW is going with it. And we're bringing the standards we fought for to the EV transition. That's the future of this industry. Now let's talk about futures. There was a time when working at the big three meant a secure retirement. In the Great Recession, the auto companies gutted our retirement and divided us with the two-tier system. Well, we fell short winning a pension back for all of you and all of our members. But what we did get were billions in our retirement accounts for all of our members, including gains we haven't seen in 15 years or more. Due to 401ks increases and in historic wage increases, in progression, members will receive between 72 to 142 percent increases in company 401ks. Contributions by the end of this agreement. Those who still have a pension got a boost, too, with the five dollars added to the multiplier. And we won for current retirees bring back the annual five hundred dollar bonus. That annual five hundred dollar bonus is not only for current retirees, but also surviving spouses. I think that captures what we tried to do in the, these negotiations. Win big for everyone, and win even more for those who we left behind. At the bargaining table, we spoke passionately about how many of our members can't afford to buy vehicles we build. Just visit Sterling Heights Assembly Plant or Jefferson North Assembly Plant on any weekday morning before the start of the shift, and you'll see a line of vehicles for UAW members who need a ride to work or drive through the parking lot and see the cars that are parked there. They aren't new. The company heard us and we're excited to announce we have won the first car lease program in Big Three history. The same lease program enjoyed by Stellantis managers will now be extended to UAW members. Under this program, UAW members, minimum of two years of employment, will have access to significantly discounted leases on Stellantis vehicles. There's no credit check, registration and plates and insurance, 24 seven road size assistance are all included. Routine maintenance such as oil changes are also covered. There are unlimited miles on these leases programs and those members will qualify for a new vehicle every year. We took our issues to the table and found creative solutions. We also made a point of undoing decades of damage done by big three corporate greed. And we focused on what would unite us across our divisions. 
but it was never just about winning big right now. We also needed to rebuild the foundation of our union, our unity, our fighting spirit, and our strike muscle. This is the most lucrative contract our union has won in decades. These contracts are so good, even non-union auto workers are getting a raise. Terrified auto executives across the country are rushing to give their own employees raises in the hopes of fitting off the UAW. But what the bosses always fail to remember is that the choice to fight for a better future belongs to the workers. Toyota's future won't be determined in the boardrooms. It'll be determined on a plant floor. It will be determined by working class families sitting around the kitchen table. And the same is true for these big three contracts. Rich and I are bringing this contract to you because we wholeheartedly believe we squeezed every dime possible out of the company. But what happens next is up to all of you. You have the final say. So now is the time for debate and discussion. And no matter the outcome, we will move forward together as a united UAW. There's a lot more in this agreement. So for more information, including your highlighter and white book, please go to uaw.org slash Delanis 2023. And remember UAW family, an open hand can be broken, but a closed fist in unity cannot. All right, that was just President Sean Bain and Vice President Rich Boyer addressing those members of the UAW. This was more of a recap of some of the victories that they've achieved so far. We didn't really learn much new information or hear anything about any kind of steps um, to make any future changes right now. But again, he did tout a lot of the victories that they have achieved so far. Um, something he acknowledged is that they fell short of winning a pension, but he's still celebrating securing those retirement plans for some of those workers. Also talking about the fact that despite whatever the future of this industry is, he says the UAW is going with it. We'll continue to follow this for you and bring you updates over the air and online at CBSDetroit.com. We'll also have this coverage for you over the air on CBS News Detroit starting at 11.